put this up. This is my oven. I'm put these components up. Put that away. Alright, so this is my little oven. Just a mini little tiny little toaster oven. No side, so I like that it's horizontal. This is uh, my interface. It's got LED lights in there. I just happened to uh, get a new LCD and it didn't fit, so I needed a spacer. So I went ahead and just made it clear, printed a spacer, and then I uh, thought, well, hell, if it's clear, I'm gonna put a clear little bezel and put some LED lights on there. I could use them as warning lights or status lights or something like that. But that was kind of cool. Kind of hard to see with the lights on, but. They're not uh, on full brightness. That's the encoder, uh, status indicator. I'm gonna reboot it. It's gonna orange light comes on, green light comes on when it hits Wi-Fi, draws the graph, and so I, right now I just have the LEDs matching the uh, this footer line. But you can use the LEDs for something else if you want to use them for like an alert, like an alarm. But right now I just have them displaying the temperature. It's, Green is uh, above ambient. It goes to orange if it's uh, warming up, and um, if it can't burn you. And then once it hits red, that means the temperature is above burn level. You know you can burn yourself if you touch anything in there. Um, that's all I'm using these lights for now. I'll probably change it to. I'll probably change these to stay off, and then um, just kick them on red when it's. Uh, when it's reflowing or flash them. I don't really have a buzzer yet, so maybe I'll just flash the lights. And um, so this is what, I don't have cooling enabled because I've been testing, but this is kind of what, what it does. If I go to cool down, and if I go to, oh, <laughs> I have it set up to skip cool down if it's not required. Let's warm it up. All right, so. This is kind of pretty much how the interface is going to be. Uh, ignore the red line, that's kind of one of my um, profile tests. Uh, it's kind of like a lead lag test, a look, a look ahead. The uh, purple line is the um, slope, temperature change, see it change to orange, and you'll see it change to red, and there it goes red. So then I'm gonna kick on cooling. Cooling is gonna turn off. Oh, I guess I don't have it set to turn off the heater. Turn off the heater. Uh, the blue is the heater power. The, there's actually two green ones. One's the average and one's the, it's getting some power spiking, so I've been logging both of them. Uh, I, if you run the thermocouple at a certain temperature, it, Kind of acts funny, so I've been I've been logging both both uh, averages and the actually I'm using mean uh, now, up uh, using mode I think now to get rid of any uh, spikes, so it keeps stays smooth. Uh, the yellow line is the internal temperature. 46 is kind of high on the SSR. Cold junctions 40. I, I need to really get the thermocouple amplifier, the max the 31855. Out, outside of this enclosure. Uh, I also need to put some holes to pull in cold air. That should solve the problem. But um, I really need to just move that so that the cold, it's actually like right here, so it's wait, I need to move it so it's not touching the chamber. Because you don't need your cold junction fluctuating like that. Uh, I don't think I have, so that's cool down. Normally, hmm. Well, I have an automated door opener and it's not working. That's the oven. Go ahead and put it in here. I got uh, I've got three thermocouples in here. I'm not using them all. Um, two of them come out. Two of them are for, for development, for testing. I got an extra here for monitoring, uh, well, just for development. But if I want to add another interface, I can. I might just take them out. 
like some I squared C DACs for the fans and some transistors and motor controller DRV3888 uh, DRV8333 and a PCF8741 just to IO expander because I don't have enough IO but I'll probably replace all this with just an ESP32 and have enough IO to do it yeah, so this is going to be a quick reflow test of, you know, a first test of my profile. Just, uh, I got some unleaded, leaded paste on here, a little component, and uh, this is an indicator right here. It's a little chunk of uh, a temperature indicator that melts at exactly 200 degrees Celsius. There's my thermocouple, there's a secondary thermocouple. And uh, it's just on a PCB and on another PCB. I mean, I have it on this uh, grate. I'm probably going to redo this so it's a little more organized, but I'm going to have thumb screws that hold the thermocouples. And then the grate keeps these, uh, these bars right here from having too much mass uh, under the board. So I guess maybe I should put this off of that. But we'll see. Actually, I probably should do that. I'll go ahead and put this on the grate. Maybe put the thermocouple on there. All right, so there's the test. So I'm gonna close this up and see how it goes. So temperature wanted, time, status, current temperature. Let's see, I got some stat information here, Wi-Fi, heating, fan status. Uh, I have an NTC on the SSR to monitor its temperature. This is the cold junction of the uh, MAX31855. This is the power level of the SSR. And this is the standard deviation of the temperature change. So this is a close approximation of a slope. Um, I don't know what the sample time is, I forget. Let's give it a run. I have full control over serial. Uh, and Telnet to this. I don't have a web interface yet, but uh, so I can do stuff like um, turn the fans on. Turn fans off. Open and close the lid. I can reboot it. I gotta fix the LEDs. They're constantly updating, so they're gonna flicker a little bit. Sorry for the handheld. There's my curve and an approximation, kind of an approximation of what um, what my target curve is. Your, your look ahead and your lead lead lag. All right, so I'm gonna start a reflow. I want to capture what temperature the uh, it smokes at because I do have an extraction fan. I need to learn when to turn that on. When the volatiles uh, hit the, hit the roof, I can suck those out to filter them so they don't just come pouring out the front. The door's not sealed right now, so I'm gonna have some leakage out of that and. Uh, Let's just see how it goes. So I'm going to do our reflow, start reflow, give it a second to go. It's going to do a preheat. It's going to do 100% for maybe 10 seconds, I think, to get it moving. Oh, that was very fast, maybe five seconds. I might have to adjust that. I have an internal fan that turns on, starts cooling the SSR down. Let's see the heater's on, pulsing, certain, uh, what, 30 something percent? Depending on my PID. The PID might be a little high. Uh, we'll see what it does. When it hits 50, it should uh, enter the curve and start reflowing. There we go. So now we're actually. Uh, We'll start ramping up and we start timing. Now we wait. Let's see if he overshoots. My pit's a little rough. It's uh, kind of undershooting and then overshooting. But um, as long as I can tweak that out, I don't have. Uh, I need to customize the uh, PID terms for ramp, soak, and peak. Right now, I'm just kind of using one 
set. Oh, I just realized the top's all jumbled there. That's uh, 123, 132. That's the desired target temp. See how, see how bad my undershoot is? See how my slope is totally offset? So I need to adjust that, that pre-start time and get it moving a little bit longer. Like I said, I thought that preheat was uh, 10 seconds full power, but it didn't seem to last uh, more than a couple seconds. Let me double check the code. Uh, preheat. It says full power of uh, 10 seconds. Hmm. I might have to look into that. I might be wrong. All right, so now, see, I mean, the curve's pretty good. It's just, uh, it's just lagging. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like 20 seconds late. So I'm not timing my peak, so I'm probably going to miss my peak. Let me go ahead and start putting this into focus. We're getting up there, the soak temperature. Let me start to see um, some of the paste starts to dry out. Clean the windows all dirty. 170. I mean, the, the curve's pretty good. It's just I just gotta get that um, you know my ramps properly properly uh, set up. And I gotta <laughs> fix the alignment of my screen. It's uh, showing the um, desired temperature and then the look ahead temperature, and it should start ramping up here. Uh, I think I do have aggressive PIDs enabled for. this zone so it should start kicking up full power you can see the LEDs flickering from all right we should start to see some stuff start to happen the uh... all right starting to reflow we're about to hit 200 Solder's reflowing already, but that rock hasn't started to melt yet. It's starting to melt, so it probably already hit 200. Um, see, I'm probably undershooting. Yeah, I only hit 198. So I'll need to fix that a little bit. But this should be a good enough reflow for no lead. For lead free. That, um, obviously that peak's going way too far. I got my cooldown timing wrong, I think. Yeah, you can see the curve matches. It's just uh, a little offset. It should already be cooling down. I don't know why it's not. Something's definitely wrong here. So I would have just murdered this board. <laughs> uh, let me do an abort. I don't know what happened there. My cooldown timing's wrong. That's not good. That was above 200 for way too long. It should only be 30 seconds peak. So I gotta figure out what happened there. It didn't get hot enough. Didn't cool down enough. So let me save this log.
All right, I'm just gonna do a little sample board. I just got the uh, power section and the buzzer amplifier. So I could probably use this as something useful after I reflow it if it doesn't burn up. And if not, maybe I could uh, throw ESP on there and actually use it. But I'm not gonna risk uh, more components than that. Probably got a plastic component on there, a buzzer, an LED, a capacitor, USB jacks. This should be a good test for reflow. I uh, just had some parts already on my pick and place. <laughs> well, my tape reels, manual pick and place. And uh, so I just threw them on this board. This is a white board, so I'm interested to see how that how that reflows. Uh, I understand. I think white needs to have a little bit more um, IR than black would. So we'll see. I'm still tweaking the uh, the profile and some PID settings, so I just lowered some PID settings. So it might undershoot and not reflow at all, but um, we will see. Alright, it's done. It looks like it locks up. But uh, here's the board. It, um, I'll take a better look at it. Looks like that little guy got messed up right there. Uh, probably because I had some paste. See, it's running properly. Cooling just shut down. Lights turned green, but the display didn't update. Um, yeah, let's take a better look at this. Let's go move some stuff out of the way. All right, so let's take a pretty good look at this. Um, shiny joints. I don't know if that reflowed all the way. It looks a little, it's the cold joint there. Now that pulled off that pad, I think because this board wasn't cleaned and I had a, I had a solder trace that went off, uh, I had some paste that went off that way and it must have pulled it. Um, these resistors look really good. I mean this is a manual paste up, this wasn't a stencil so. Mm, looks like there's a little bit of solder beading there. Not just beading, there's a hole. Bunch. LED looks like it's soldered okay. It's got a couple balls. That one looks really good. Might have just been the right amount of paste. Could have been the board warmed up easy faster on the edge. Maybe I need to um, kick on the fan a little bit to get some convection going. This uh, looks like this uh, buzzer reflowed pretty good. I doubt the USB connector did. Wow. It looks pretty good. I mean, it looks like it's probably got a short there. I can't really tell. Yeah, there's definitely some shorts there, but... It definitely flowed. That's normal right there, the way that the way that speaker looks. I might have got a little too hot. I don't really know. I'll have to look at some other ones and see. I don't know if that's normal. That might be normal. Oh look, there's some solder right there. I don't know how that got all the way over there though. That side's fine. I don't know what happened to this side. Let me see. 
Maybe it's just the light. No, oh, it's fine. Oh, I broke my fingernail. Fingernails are dirty. I was digging in the dirt today. No, it's fine. It was just the lighting. All right, let's power it. Let's fix that diode and then or you can see it there. There you go. Yeah, the whole thing's bridged. So I'll touch that up and I'll uh, see if it works. All right, let's see if it works. If I can do this with one hand. Well, the power light lights up. Let's see if we got three volts. If we can make that buzzer make noise. All right, let's see if the um, speaker works too. Uh, three volts. I think this is on pin. Oops. Maybe three. Get in there. Get in there. There you go. And 13. Yep, it works. Sweet. 